All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Jackson hold today. I'm pretty sure everybody knew that already. Uh, list of speakers. 8, 8.15. Well, let me change the time frame. 9, 9 9.15, 9.30, 11.30, 2.10. So there's going to be speakers all day. They've all been relatively hawkish. There's no expectation that Powell's going to be anything but hawkish. Uh, but whether the market will absorb it as a hawkish statement is, you know, it's a completely different thing. We're still looking at a 60-40 for a 75 basis point rate hike. What you want to be watching for today after he's done is, are they going to start talking about 100 basis points? If you notice, say, for the November 2nd, there's multiple choices because it's farther away and we don't know what could be on, on the docket at that point, right? We start looking at, you know, mid-December, we got four choices. Everybody thinks we have it narrowed down to two choices, 50 basis points or 75 basis points. But at the end of today, or at least after the end of his speech, we want to come back to that Fed tool and see if 25 basis points ends up on here, which would be really, really dovish. Or if 100 basis points lands on here, which would be really, really hawkish. I'm not expect I'm not expecting that, right? But we want to at least look because that would give us some kind of idea of what we're looking at in the market. What kind of price, you know, in the S and P and the Nasdaq we would expect? Yeah. Morning, Fran. One of the things you want to be looking for today also is um, not just, you know, whether it's going to be 50 or 75, because he probably won't come out and say that. We're going to have to try to infer. So it, it won't be, you know, just some blunt statement of him saying, oh, yeah, we're going to rate put a 75 point rate hike in instead what we want to listen for is any tone or shift in his policy stance that um, implies there's going to be a significant change in the pace of the reductions keep in mind that in the first part of september they're going to start really running that qt program uh, at an accelerated pace. I, th I believe it's 100% more than it is at the moment, which, you know, at the moment, it's not, it's not much. All right. So, what we got on the agenda for today, as we do with every day. Eight thirty ten and one. That rig count. I don't expect it to be much of anything. The consumer sentiment, you know, it, it's not going to be one of the data points that the Fed uses, so it won't be parsed uh, as anything significant on its own. Inventories may, 
and retail, especially after that move yesterday in retail, may be one really worth keeping an eye on. Volume is really light, which makes perfect sense because everybody's on hold, right? We're all waiting for the play. So what I want to do here, you know, every morning we, we lay out the three ranges and we talk about, you know, what the market could do. It's always those three that it can stay in the range. It can break to the upside. It can break to the downside. Let's take it a, a step farther. Hey, morning, Jess. Let's take it a little bit farther than that first and come out to the big picture for a moment. Because you really want to step back and, and kind of ask the question, all right, there is very likely going to be some serious volatility today. The rate funds and the hedge funds are heavy, heavy short. They're expecting, you know, really hawkish statements from Powell. They're expecting him to uh, put the smack down on any exuberance, any behavioral push from this pivot that caused a little bit of this rally up, kind of shut that down. But they don't want to, you know, make the market crash and burn. So he's really trying to thread that needle between getting a point across that, look, we're going to continue to raise rates and we're going to do everything that it takes. And I think they're going to quit trying to use that soft landing language, right? I think they're going to start bringing in the more of whatever it takes language and imply that they really are willing to, uh, you know, crush employment and, uh, and do, quote, whatever it takes. So with that in mind, start gaming out where are we headed? What kind of direction is that going to put us in? And where's the next pivot point? Right? Those bigger term pivot points, not just oh, where we're going to be at the end of the day kind of thing. Now, we're already on the edge of the expected move. And we've already got next week's plotted. Although it's not set yet, it's going to continue to move all day until the end of the day today. But if this is our expected move, 4147-ish, right around in there, would be our target to the downside and still be in the box. So when we think about, well, how bad could it get today and how extreme could the move be? We've got ADR. And right now, the 21 day ADR is 1.39%. Call it a $60 move. That would put us to the downside at around 41.18. We have a market maker move of $40. So we already had 60. We could add another 40 to that. That's $100. Now on a normal, typical, everyday, run-of-the-mill kind of day, taking our ADR is what we would expect. Right. So when you add the market maker move, $100 a day, that's not much. That's not out of line. 
what would an extreme move look like? We would want to take that $100 and break it in half. So it would be 150. That would be the start of an extreme move. And then you want to take that $100 and double it. And that'd be $200. And that would be your base case for if the poo really hit the fan today. So from the close, a $200 move would put us down to 4,000. And remember, that's just a measured move. That's not a market falling apart. Take it the other way. I'm going to call it 44 because it's just it's just close enough. If the market was to get crazy bullish on the other side, 44. And if you're thinking, nah, man, that that that's too extreme. You're reaching. These are measured moves. This isn't, you know, someone putting their bias into it with their feelings and emotions. It just is what it is. So a base case argument today is 4,300, 4,100. And a little bit of chaos would be 4,000 flat or 4,400. Now with that in mind on SPY or SPX, you could do the same thing, just kind of move the decimals around, right? It wouldn't be that bad. Think about how much money it would cost to put a butterfly on at those round numbers. Probably in the SPX, you could probably get it pretty cheap, five cents, right? You, you can't run penny spreads on the SPX. So five cents is the cheapest you could go. A five cent butterfly, you know, just kind of thrown on there. The worst that's going to happen, you're going to lose commissions and you're going to lose your five cents. Commissions are kind of high. It's a butterfly. That'd be four contracts, three legs. So, you know, you, you could lose a maximum of 10 cents, $10. Hey, I don't like to lose, but it, it's $10. I think I think I would make it, right? It would survive. But if one of those hits, it'd be a 300, 400, 500% profit off of that $5. So it's certainly something to think about today. And I mentioned the butterfly just because of how absolutely cheap they are, right? You, you put them on and you never look back. You don't even bother screwing with it. Like whatever, if it doesn't work, whatever. It's five cents. It's okay. Keep in mind also today that when he starts to talk and the market starts to move around, he very likely is going to say more than one thing at more than one point in his speech that's going to move this market. So it might start out that it goes crazy up and then in the middle of everything, crazy down. So don't think that whatever you start to get is going to stick, right? And I'm not saying don't trade it. It's not my place to tell you to trade or don't trade or Trade it. I don't care. Just, you know, take profit and be ready for that thing to flip over on you. Even after he's done talking, the market can stay in a particular direction, say, until lunch or, or even after lunch, and then still flip over. Because somewhere along the way, some nerds can really start crunching what he talked about and decide that they are now hearing it differently, right? And we've seen that, say, at the couple of Fed meetings ago where the market started out bullish in the afternoon, but by the next day, we were down and, and we kept going down because the market went back and, and reevaluated what he had said and decided maybe that he wasn't as dovish as they had thought. I bring that up for swing traders more than anything else. 
we're all on pause, right? Waiting for him to come out and chip his teeth so we could put some swing trades on, try to get a couple in before FOMC in September. We got CPI, PPI, FOMC. September, we're going to be ducking and dodging. So we're, you know, looking for the opportunity to put some swings on. Wait for the later part of today or even wait till Monday, right? There's no, no reason to jump the gun. We got ISM on the 6th. CPI on the 13th. PPI on the 14th. And on the 21st of September is the FOMC. So almost every week on Wednesday in September up to the Fed week has got events. We'll have to let it play out. Now, we got a little bit of excitement yesterday that was um, kind of a little bit of a surprise. Remember, we had that expectation that we really wasn't going to do much and that we were just going to hold the range. And the market kind of woke up a little bit with a vengeance and it took off. Now, if you haven't heard, the why behind that yet. Chinese tech companies or uh, short interest companies on the China side were getting nice little flow, some squeeze and a pop. And that bled through into everything else. It didn't stick, but that's where the fire, that's where the flows came from. So pretty interesting on that side. I'm really hoping that we're going to have this issue solved with Restream by Monday. I've been talking with restream support they can't seem to find out it's not the mic guys if i stream anywhere else and in fact i'm recording this on the zoom everything is fine it's only the restream and i've talked to the tech guys they don't know what to do i don't know what to do except get the get rid of restream quit doing these live for you guys on youtube and just post the recording from zoom two hours later that's about all i can do and i don't like that because that's not going to give you guys much time to uh prepare but hopefully by monday we're going to have a solution to this um i checked restream on another computer because I run two computers at once and it works really good on another computer. So it's the I think it's the machine, which is sad because that's a brand new machine and I buy power powerhouse machine. So my trusty old ancient Dell slim form factor is still kicking butt and taking names, but this brand new I buy power machine can't run a restream. If... so we'll see I think I'm going to just wipe the whole system and see if that fixes it I don't even know why that would have anything to do with it but either way so the idea guys is that move yesterday was short interest names and it wasn't the same ones right it wasn't uh gamestop and amc and ape and bby
on the other side of this move today, or even as by the time we start coming into lunch, start hitting those sector names, looking around to see where the money flow is going to go. The hedge funds are short. The rate funds are short. And if they're caught off sides, they're going to start to want to move. Start parsing it out. See if we get uh, stocks and bonds moving in the same direction, which kind of goes into, we know it's not supposed to do that, but it does happen. Gold's getting laid off this morning. Had an inside date breakout. Bitcoin as well, inside date breakout. Very significant liquidation break there in Bitcoin. That's a pure risk off move, right? If they, uh, if we look at Bitcoin as just 100% pure speculation, that it's a risky asset and that the institutions look to this when they're feeling frisky, well, they just got out. Right? They just took a lot of risk off the table. We had a pretty significant move in the dollar. And with this uh, little post pop here that started right around the time I started. I guess it was a little earlier than that. Bonds didn't participate in it, but the dollar did. And this is a little weird. This puts us right back into that place where we say, hey, it's not supposed to do that. A rising dollar is a headwind, not a, not a tailwind. We should not be seeing the dollar right now moving up with the indexes. And yet that's what we've got going on. That's the kind of craziness that, that's going on out there right now. So we really want to watch these tools through the morning to see if they get back into line or if this craziness gets worse. Look for a very high correlation coefficient today. This may be a day where we get to run our alpha protocols. So today, don't look to the dollar or the bonds or the VIX to really give you any kind of insight. Not, not today. We're seeing it already that they're just not moving in a way that makes sense. Focus on the advancing and declining issues. And think about what happens most of the time. Most of the time, the monsters of tech run the show. And those eight names carry the market or drop the market. But there's times where they don't really do much of anything. And the rest of the market does all the heavy lifting. And it's on days like that where the market breadth, like the advancing and declining, can really be insightful. In a high correlation coefficient, we're going to be looking for 99, 98 names in the NASDAQ 100. We're going to be looking for 495, 497 names in the S&P 500. We're looking for that kind of number. All right, so this is a 15-minute chart of the, t the NYSE tick. And I, I threw a moving average in there, which is that cyan line. And the divergence that it signaled back here on 8.12, 8.13. Remember, CPI was uh, 8.10. So we had two days of bullishness, and then this started to signal 
a downward move in the market. It took two days for the SPX to catch on. So the divergence was solid as a rock. Same thing along these lows when it started turning around and going back up. Bullish divergence. It took the S&P a few days, right? And it started making that upward move yesterday. This was already signaling it Tuesday. So keep your eye on the NY Fang, the KRE, and that advanced decline. I don't even think the cumulative tick is going to be much value today. Certainly nothing. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think a lot of these are going to do us any good. I think it's going to be fractured, fractal, and chaos. If we do get that high correlation coefficient, all of these are going to tag or peg out. So the ADNDD should be pushing, you know, 97, 98, pressing right against the top. And the ADSPD, same thing, top or bottom, because it can go negative, right? We could turn bearish and drop like a stone. So it'd be minus, minus 497, 498, or minus 97, minus 98. Now, Thinkorswim's got that visualized tab. And if you get rid of the heat map and put your index, you can watch the money flow. And these are detachable, so you can stack them all up. You, you can put all the indexes out there, nice, small little footprint. They take a very little chart space. In a high correlation coefficient, you're going to want those issues pressing right up into the, the high 90s. Because if you activate your alpha protocol, you want to make sure you're really running with the group. We've got a market maker move on just about every sector. And for the week, energy, another kind of energy, metals and mining, those three are the biggest positive movers on the week. Retail is still down the worst. And then behind retail, technology, consumer discretionary, and then communications. Those are the worst. Now in the pre-market this morning, gold's getting whacked pretty good. And the rest don't meet our criteria of 50% or a half of a percent. I think today is going to be a lot like what we've been focused on most this year. Uh, intraday trades, energy and finance are probably going to be your best bet. But once the talk really starts kicking off, look for things that have made the biggest moves to focus on, right? If we start getting negative, look for the things that did the best yesterday. They've got the farthest to fall. Now, a little bit of oddity is Tesla. That split should have been seen as this really great thing, right? It should have had positive exuberance, 
we should have seen traders piling into this thing just so happy to be able to get it so cheap even the even the social sentiment like stock twists and places like that this thing should have been lit up like a rocket ship not only did none of that happen it didn't even move with the monsters of tech yesterday so if things start to get negative today, I would put my focus into something like this. So hopefully guys, the audio will be done on Monday. If not, then I'll just upload replays after I record them on Zoom. Everybody be careful. Have a good week. Good weekend. And hopefully I'll see y'all on Monday.